Greetings, people. Well, yesterday I installed a new drive into one of my machines. And lo and behold, <laughs> after I turned it back on, and after I shut it down and went to bed, I forgot to format it and mount it. So here is a, a video that I'm going to do a short tutorial on how to use YAS to manage and manipulate partitions. Now, I will probably piss some of my peers off by using uh, uh, some part file systems that they think are crap and others will think, ah, why are you using that? Yeah, who cares? So, here's the machine. I've already got Yast up. So when you're in Yast, if you go and uh, add a new machine, like let's say you've got a workstation and you need to expand your drives, well, you can go down here into the partitioner. And this partitioner acts exactly the same as the partitioner when you install OpenSUSE or SUSE Enterprise. They are one and the same, and it has not changed much, if at all, in the way you interact with it since OpenSUSE 9.3 or SUSE 9.3. It's pretty much been the same. So when you open the partition, uh, you get this error me or this message saying, if you're not familiar with how to deal with uh, partitions, uh, you, basically you might uh, you might want to bugger off or you'll lose something. I've only got two drives in the machine that we're dealing with today, so. I should know if I screw something up. I've done this enough. So, here we go. Let's bring this dead front and center. And I'll close this, because I don't need that. So, I installed a 240 gig Samsung Evo 750. Uh, mostly because I need the space. And as you can see here, there is... it's not formatted, there are no other partitions in it. Now, let me explain the interface a little bit. Uh, let's say, like for example, on my workstation here, I just recently installed two drives, two 250 gig drives. Once you go and format those, uh, you can go into RAID and you can set them up for RAID. You can either do uh, you can do any sort of setup. In this case, I would have done either RAID one or RAID zero. Uh, one, I, one would make it one volume that would be 500 megs. One would be just a mirror image. I wouldn't have done anything else, mostly because I'm not really that familiar with them and I believe they require more drives than what I'd be able to a lot. Uh, volume management, uh, I've actually never messed with that. Uh, ButterFS uh, allows you to manage your, uh, I believe your snapshots and whatnot. I could be wrong. I love to learn some more about that but I have not had too much experience in the house or in the home setting or in the small business uh, setting with ButterFS there just hasn't been the need uh, definitely useful and then this going to unused devices will tell you hey this drive has not been formatted do something with it so what I'm going to do is click Add Partition. I'm going to only do one partition on this drive. 
this drive is going to actually be my Steam drive. I will be migrating all of my Steam data in another video uh, over to the solid state drive. I will be doing another video on that. That's just an example of one of the many things you can do. On my workstation, I had one drive be dedicated to nothing but these these videos <laughs> when I'm recording these videos. I don't want them on my home directory. They're just too big. So I ended up creating a completely separate drive just for the videos, just for the thumbnails, the custom thumbnails and whatnot related to these. Uh, and then I have another one for Steam because some Steam games are stupidly huge. So, click Next. This is where you can uh, custom do the size of your partitions, and you, ha you really do need to pay attention to this last bit here. Uh, is it gigabits, or is it uh, megabit? It's... it's you need to pay attention to that because that is going to be your partition size and the only way that's going to be manipulated if you screw up later on is if you run gparted on a uh, a live instance like a live USB or a live CD etc. Uh, been there, done that, made a boot partition that was 512 megabytes and I ran out of space and had issues because I had three versions of the kernel installed, including the Zen kernel, which ended up filling up the space. So I had to expand that using Gparted. So make sure you pay attention to this. You need, you, you need to pay attention to make sure your partitions are the correct size that you need for that moment and give yourself a little wiggle room for the future. Don't make it so that you have no space at all in case some log file goes all bloaty on you. Or if, a, like a boot partition, if the kernel, if you have 128 megs for the boot partition and a kernel update has uh, all the modules and whatnot, for, and it fills up 256 megs. Yeah, that's going to be an issue. So, a little rambling there. Click next, and this is this is probably the newest thing that's popped up in OpenSUSE is this particular page that allows you to delegate. Okay, what is this drive? What is the aim for this drive? Is it going to be running the operating system? Is it going to be containing data in ISV applications? Is it going to be a swap? Or is it going to be none of the above and you want to make it a raw for volume? So when you're doing a fresh install onto a machine, yes, you're going to want to pay attention to have your root be operating system and it will automatically uh, size it for what it thinks would be the appropriate size and set the uh, file system to uh, SUSE's default which will be ButterFS uh, and your home will be data in ISV applications and that by default the last time I tried it defaults to uh, XFS uh, and then you also, it's, it's recommended to make a swap partition, uh, but in the case of solid state drives, it might just be better to actually create a swap file on the drive than actually create a swap partition. That way you can turn it on and off as you need and save your reads and writes. Now, Raw volume is uh, useful. As I mentioned earlier, there is the ability to manage RAID instances. 
and uh, the raw volume will allow you to do that. You'll be able to set up whatever you want, whatever file system you want. Uh, you can leave it blank so that you can deal with it for RAID, so on and so forth. In this case, I'm going to leave it at data and ISV. I'm going to switch from XFS to EXT4. The reason for this is I've been burnt with XFS. I had a solid, uh, an SSD that had one bad block, and because of that, XFS has no way of managing black, bad blocks. It completely and utterly used up all of the reads and writes and destroyed that particular solid state drive. It took me about three months to get a new uh, SSD. SSDs are expensive. So, now I'm going to go to Mount Partition and as I said, I'm going to be uh, using this for Steam. So, let's go Control Shift or Control V and Steam App Drive. Now I'm going to go into FS tab mod and uh, name the volume label. I'll leave it at ordered. So yeah, you, you, you can manage a lot of your FS tab stuff via a graphical interface here versus actually going and opening FS tab with an editor and dealing with all this stuff. Uh, my knowledge of some of these things is not the greatest, like what's the difference between ordered and journaled. I was taught that, but it's been such a long time that off the top of my head right now, I don't remember. I've got kittens on the top of my head and Geeko drinking cold brew coffee. That's uh, occupying my mind. <laughs> okay, so everything there is done. Hit finished. It's no longer in the unused devices. It's here. And you can see drive is being named. I'm going to do a few other things here. I'm going to name the this volume, edit, fs tab, home, finish, DOS root. And that should be all that I need to do. I'll hit go to installation summary. This is one that I probably, for me, I usually ignore, but in this case, it's always good to go and check your installation summary and make sure that uh, everything is going to as planned. Uh, sorry about that, that was really odd. 
Uh, so in going back to this, uh, in, in this case, it's always really good to go and review the changes that are going to happen. Uh, in the case of doing a fresh install of OpenSUSE, which I've got a video on that somewhere, uh, you review it, you've got a review at the end. So I'm going to hit next. Here it's going to tell you again what changes are going to be done and hit finish and here it is and that's all you need to do awesome so one of the things that i'm going to need to do because uh this was done as root in yast uh that particular mount point Though it's in my home directory, it, it's only accessible by, or I can, the only group that can read and write to it is root. So I am going to need to change that. And I could do it via the command line, but I'm a bit lazy when it comes to that. Properties, mission. Okay, that did not open as planned. There we go. It should be, there we go. Properties, permission, Okay, well, that should be it for this particular video. I thank you for uh, joining me for this, and have a wonderful day.